Which is the best? The new Tesla Model 3, which has been heavily revised, or the newer BYD <laughs> Seal, which has come fresh from China. Now, to compare them, what I'm gonna do is talk you around the exteriors, show you their interiors, compare their technology, put them through a series of tests. I've just farted. And of course, I'm gonna drag race them. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow with America versus China, the war none of us really need. Let's start off with the prices. So the Tesla is actually the least expensive car of the two when it comes to the starting price because it kicks off at just under £40,000 for the single motor rear drive version, whereas the single motor rear drive version of the BYD starts from just over £45,000. However, the cars I have here, the dual motor versions, for the Tesla, the starting price of that is just under £50,000, whereas the BYD Seal is slightly less expensive, £48,500. So these cars are pretty closely matched on price, but which one looks the best? Let's start with the new Tesla Model 3. Tell you the truth, it's not completely new. It's still the same car pretty much underneath, but they have made so many changes to it that it seems right to call it new. For instance, it's got a new face. I could do with a new face. This one's getting a little bit old. AI, help me out. As well as a facelift, Tesla has given the new Model 3 a butt lift. It has some new brake lights and the bumpers have been redesigned with different reflectors and some new trim. Big wow. Tesla hasn't changed much down the side either, so it looks just like the old Model 3 from this angle. You do get some new 18-inch alloys though. Ooh. Or you can pay £1,500 extra for a set of 19-inch wheels instead. Ah. The 19s do look better, but they do affect the car's range due to the added rolling resistance, something no one ever cared about with piston engine cars. Anyway, more on that later, because now we need to discuss plagiarism. The BYD is giving off mild Tesla Model 3 vibes from certain angles, but I guess that's just because it's a medium-sized saloon car. However, there is one thing that is rather Tesla-y. They're not exactly Model 3. Can you guess what it is? Have you spotted it? Yeah. It's these, look, 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 look. These headlights with this bit underneath here really remind me of the Tesla Roadster. The Chinese aren't back to their old tricks of copying other cars, are they? I quite like all the extra details BYD has added, like the creases down the sides and the little fins under the rear doors. The BYD comes with 19-inch alloys as standard, but there's only one design available. There are lots more paint colours to choose from than the Model 3, however. The seal comes in white, black, dark blue, or this light blue as standard. Dark green and light grey cost about £900 more, but that's a lot cheaper than Tesla's optional paint jobs, which are £2,000 for the red or the grey and £1,300 for the blue or the black. White is the only standard colour on the Tesla, though to be fair, it suits the car best. But even so, I'm still going to give the design win to China. You see, I ever so slightly prefer the look of the BYD seal to the Tesla Model 3. Apart from that rear diffuser, it's just stupid. At least it does have better door handles though. You see, I really don't get on with the ones on the Tesla. I have to do it two-handed. Someone showed me how to do it properly once. I'm not sure if it's like that that you do it, but it, it's just, I just don't like it. Don't like it. So I prefer to just go like that. Look, it's just easier, isn't it? And you might be thinking, well, they're not fleshed out the Teslas. No, oh, yeah, of course they are. It's like that, isn't it? Yeah. It's better. Actually, let's go back to the Tesla for a moment. That doesn't sound quite so solid, though it might be because you've got frameless windows. Hmm. Let's stop this nonsense and do something far more serious. Drag race. The Tesla Model 3 Long Range has 
two electric motors, one on each axle, so it's got four wheel drive. Combined, those motors put out 490 horsepower and 490 newton meters of torque. And this thing weighs in at 1,840 kilos. The BYD seal has dual electric motors like this, so it's four wheel drive, but combined they put out 530 horsepower and 670 newton meters of torque. So it's ahead on those stats. Unfortunately, it's a bit heavier than this car. It weighs in at 2.2 tons. So how's that gonna play out when we drag race them? Let's find out. So then what exactly happened? Well, as you can see, it's very close on the line, but the slow motion action replay reveals that it was the BYD that crossed the line first ahead of the Tesla. However, both cars recorded a standing quarter mile time of 12.6 seconds. So the BYD is quicker in a drag race than the Tesla, but can the Tesla pull things back when it comes to the interior? The basic dashboard design is similar to the old car, but there's a new LED strip around the base of the windscreen, some added aluminium on the center console, and new dashboard trims. These changes are good. What's not so good though, is the fact that the indicator stalks have been ditched in favor of buttons on the steering wheel, which are awkward to use. And the physical gear selector has gone too. Now you have to swipe a slider icon on the infotainment screen to switch from forward to reverse gear. Tesla, you have taken minimalism too far. The BYD couldn't be more different. Most of the BYD sales interior is pretty conventional. There's a normal drive selector, thank God. Well, unless of course your God is Elon. And there's some physical buttons on the center console. The air vents are pretty normal too, though the curvy dashboard is less so. And generally the materials in the BYD are a match for the Teslas, but there are some scratchy bits of trim on the door handles and door bins, which are two areas you'll actually touch quite a bit. Speaking of which, there's a decent amount of storage in the SEALs cabin, but then that's also true of the Tesla. Now you can't talk about these cars' interiors without mentioning their massive touchscreens. Both measure over 15 inches. Yes, you still get all the same silly sound effects as in the old Model 3, but the screen is brighter and faster now. I guess that means more farts per minute. The rest of the infotainment is basically the same as before. So that means no physical buttons. There are a few shortcut icons for the climate control, which is good, but adjusting other settings is more of a faff, especially when you're driving. In fact, Tesla only seems to care about features you can use when you're parked. You get Netflix, YouTube, Disney Plus, and Zoom. There are even racing games you can play using the steering wheel as a controller, if you want to look like a kid who's been left on their own in a car. But you can't get Apple CarPlay nor Android Auto. Why not? You can get them in almost every other car these days, even a mid-range Dacia Sandero. Okay, so the Model 3's infotainment system is actually pretty good on the whole. It's definitely easier to use than lots of other touchscreens, and I'm talking about those from Volkswagen. However, the Model 3 isn't perfect. Tesla flat out refuses to give its cars a heads up display. And you really need one in the Model 3 because the speedometer is only visible on the central screen. And I don't like having to look slightly off to the side every time I want to check my speed. And I'm definitely not the only one who thinks that. This is not a problem with the BYD seal because they have sensibly given their car a digital driver's display. So the speedo's just there. Oh, and you've also got a heads-up display, so you can have the speed there projected on the road in front of you. I don't know why Tesla don't just fit their cars with heads-up displays. Just solve the problem instantly. You know, it's not beyond the wit of them, surely, because with the Cybertruck, they created a vehicle which has body panels so tough that you can do this to them. Here we go. 
<laughs> but there is one thing you can do with the BYD's infotainment system you can't do with the Teslas. Mm, portrait mode. In truth, this screen is a bit of a gimmick. This is exactly the kind of thing that will probably stop working when the car gets a bit old. Some features don't even work properly in both orientations right now, like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But at least you do get smartphone mirroring, unlike in the Model 3. Speaking of which, some of the BYD's menus also look like they were inspired by the Tesla, but they're more fiddly and generally less easy to use. There aren't any permanent shortcut icons like you get in the Tesla either, so doing simple stuff like changing the cabin temperatures is just more difficult. It's not all bad though, I like the way the sat-nav displays in portrait mode because you can see more of your route ahead. And this brings me on to my next test. I asked both cars to calculate a route from our filming location in Oxfordshire to Aberdeen in Scotland. A nice long journey, the sort that electric car owners probably never do. This means the cars will have to recharge on the way, but will their navigation systems automatically add a charging stop? The BYD system is easy to program and it shows a couple of different route options, but it doesn't automatically add EV chargers along the way. There's a feature that shows you your remaining range as a green outline on the map, but you have to add chargers manually along your route, which is a bane. All this is much easier in the Tesla. You just enter your destination and the car automatically adds chargers to your route. Not only that, it will tell you how long to stay charging at each one and how full to take your battery to before moving on to the next one to give you the least amount of charging time possible for you to make it to your chosen destination. That is brilliant. That facility is a massive advantage of the Tesla, as is the fact that you have Tesla's supercharger network. That really does matter when it comes to electric cars. Another big advantage of the Tesla Model 3 is the autopilot system. No, it can't actually drive itself. That's a bit of a Tesla lie. And you still have to keep your hands on the wheel in the UK, unlike in other parts of the world where you can take your hands off the wheel when driving a Tesla using autopilot. It's really just an adaptive cruise control system that's a little bit more advanced. So it'll accelerate, brake and steer for you and it can automatically change lanes on motorways and your carriageways. It can wirelessly update itself too, so you always get the latest software, just like on your phone. But just like with your phone, there can also be problems. Autopilot is still in the testing phase. And this means Tesla can change features or switch them off completely whenever it wants. It also means that it's not completely bug proof. In fact, that's exactly what happened to this particular car. Right, let's see how easy this Tesla Model 3 is to park. Now, this one has the advanced autopilot feature. So while I'm driving next to these cars, it should be monitoring for a gap and then it should auto steer me into the gap if the gap is large enough. But it's not operational today because Tesla has had to recall 2 million vehicles for a fault with their autopilot system and that whole parking thing is part of the autopilot system. It's happening right now, this recall. When I say recall, it's actually an over-the-air update, but they've disabled full autopilot and some of the functionality while they fix the system. So I'm gonna have to park this thing myself. So let's see how easy it is. So swiping the screen is going to reverse. What, the, no, this swipey screen, I'm not a fan of that. I much prefer the old system where you just use the lever to go into reverse or drive. Anyhow, let's see if my cameras will help me out. I like the way it gives you the distance. Now I can't go much further back because I'll be curbing my wheels. No, there is no curb. Stop, okay, I'll stop. This is gonna be multiple maneuvers. One good thing is that you can go from lock to lock, lock, lock to lock in two turns of the wheel, which isn't bad. There's another stop. No one ever looks out the back window anymore. It's pointless in this. I've got no idea where the rear of the car is. This camera does the job perfectly. Quite a few maneuvers, but I think I'm in and relatively close to the curb. Turning circle actually on this is 11.6 meters, which is fairly decent. It helps when maneuvering like that.
Ah, God. Well, that was a problem, wasn't it? I thought I'd gone into drive, but actually it hadn't actually registered. But I was still in reverse and almost crashed into the car behind. That was so close. I hate that system. Anyway, that's that done. Let's try the BYD seal. That was a bit nerve wracking. This car doesn't have any auto part facility, whatever. So I'm gonna to have to bike it myself anyhow. Oh my God, first thing, the brakes are really grabby. Can I alter the brake sensitivity? Mm. Brake assist mode, let's try it again. Oh, that feels weird. No, oh, it's horrible. Anyway, I do prefer that little lever though to select drive or reverse. Much better than the screen system on the Tesla. Ooh, my camera's all dirty. Let's go for 3D effect. There we go. Is this going to help me? I like the way the wheels aren't even turning. <laughs> it's just gliding back. Oh, look, we've got it in metric rather than inches like the Tesla. That 3D is just not helping me here. Let's go normal. The steering's light and the turning circle's slightly better than the Tesla 11.4 meters. Okay, I find that slightly easier than the Tesla. Once again, there's no point in looking at the back window because you can't see where the rear of the car is really. The cameras are the way to do it. Let's see if I can get out of here without the same dramas as in the Tesla. I'm less likely to make a mistake because of that lever, I just prefer it. But the brakes are awful, so grubby. But that was less stress overall. Now, let's find out what these cars are like in the back. The Tesla's all right, so knee room's good, headroom pretty decent as well. My only real complaints are the fact that you don't get that much under thigh support and you can't really stretch your feet out underneath the seat in front. The Model 3 is pretty good at carrying three adults in the back at once. There's a decent amount of space for everyone's feet and headroom is okay, even for taller passengers in the middle seat. It's a bit tighter for those on the outer seats though, so they might bump their heads on the glass roof if you go a little bit too quickly over a speed hump. But how does the BYD seal compare? I think this feels slightly more comfortable. So the seats are a bit more sculptured to your bottom, so you sit in them more. And the seat backs are a bit more sculptured as well and more reclined. So the seating position is just a bit more relaxing. There's a touch more under thigh support as well. And maybe knee room's a bit more as is headroom. But as with the Tesla, you can't really slide your feet underneath the seat in front, but it's less of an issue here. What's more of an issue though, is that this dark interior doesn't feel quite as nice and airy as a lighter interior on that Tesla. The BYD has a bit more space for everyone's knees and shoulders than you get in the Tesla, but there's less headroom for tall passengers. And foot space is even more cramped, especially in the middle seat. Overall, this means the BYD doesn't feel quite as spacious in the back as the Tesla does. But how do these cars compare when you need to carry younger passengers? The BYD's back doors open nice and wide, so it's fairly easy to lift in a large child seat. And the Isofix anchor points are also dead easy to locate behind plastic covers. Job done, simple. Meanwhile, the Tesla's back doors don't open as wide as the BYD's and the Isofix anchor points are hidden by the seat material, so you might end up scratching the interior if you're not careful. The BYD is definitely the winner here, but both these cars have quite low roofs, which makes it hard for tall adults to lean in and out when messing around trying to get a screaming toddler pinned in the seat. If you have young kids, you might be better off with a taller SUV. But how practical are these electric cars when it comes to carrying luggage? There is quite a difference between these cars at boot capacities. So Tesla says the Model 3 has 594 litres of space, whereas the BYD Seal, they're only quoting 400 litres for this car. But as you can see, there's enough room in both of these cars' boots to carry a man. But is there room for two men? Well, let's find out. Move back, move back. Right, so let's see if I can get in. <sighs> that ain't gonna shut. Let, let me try 69, huh? <sighs> Is this gonna work? Oh. Can we shut that boot? Will this shut? Oh, what are you doing with that? Yeah! It's not very comfy though. Ah! Oh! There's no room to jiggle about. Open the boot. 
Sorry, did you get a boot to the head? No, it's fine. Oh, right, let's try the Tesla. See if we can do it this way, so we can spoon rather than 69. Let's have a spoon. Yeah, that's better. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I've just farted. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Let us out. This is definitely way bigger. Sorry about that. Oh, in fact, I'm gonna lock you in with it. <laughs> but that's not all. Tesla and BYD also get front boots, or fruits, as I like to call them. The BYD has a 53 litre fruit, but the Tesla can carry 88 litres underneath its bonnet. That's more than enough for all the charging cables you might need to carry around with you. It also means that the Tesla has a total storage capacity, both in the front and the rear boot, of 682 litres, which trumps the equivalent figure of the BYD seal, which is a comparatively small 453 litres. But to be fair, still decent enough. But what happens when you need to fill your car with electricity rather than men? Well, the BYD seal has a usable battery capacity of 82.5 kilowatt hours, and you can charge it from 10% to 80% full in 26 minutes. That's because it's only capable of DC charging up to 150 kilowatts. The Tesla, however, can charge up to 250 kilowatts, which means you can charge it from 10% to 80% full in just 14 minutes. To be fair though, it does have a slightly smaller battery than the BYD seal. It's 75 kilowatt hours. But charging speeds are just part of the story. What really matters for an electric car is how far you can go on a full charge. So how did the Tesla and BYD compare in terms of range? Well, Tesla claims the entry-level Model 3 with a single motor can do 344 miles on a full charge, but that's only if you stick with the standard 18-inch alloy wheels. Fancy the bigger 19-inch rims? You'll have to make do with just 318 miles of claimed range. The single motor seal, which comes with 19-inch alloy wheels as standard, can go a lot further. Well, according to BYD, it says you'll get 354 miles from a full charge. But what about the dual motor versions? Well, BYD says that the four-wheel drive version should do 323 miles on a full charge, whereas the dual motor Tesla Model 3, called the long range, can go a lot further. On the 19-inch alloys, it's supposed to be able to do 390 miles, but on the 18-inch wheels, Tesla claims 421 miles is possible. That's about the same distance as driving from Birmingham to Aberdeen, in case you were wondering. And that means Tesla definitely wins this round. However, all these figures are calculated according to the WLTP tests, and they tend to be a bit optimistic of what you can actually achieve in the real world as an owner. When I tested the old Tesla Model 3 long range, it only managed 290 miles on a full charge, but was supposed to be able to do 389 miles according to the WLTP tests. It'll be interesting to see how this new car compares with its updated software. So I'm going to compare the new Tesla Model 3 and BYD seal in a real world range test very soon, along with lots of other brand new cars. So if you don't want to miss out on that video when it goes live, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and click the bell icon so you're notified when we upload that video. Well, that's enough of the sensible stuff. Let's see what these cars are like if you want to have a little bit of fun when the road gets twisty. I'm going to start in this Model 3. Right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> you always know with electric cars, it's just the acceleration out the bends. This long range has so much punch. Do they need to bring out the performance? I don't know. It's so quick. The steering's precise, grip levels are good. It doesn't lean too much in the bends, but it leans enough to let you know what's going on. Considering I'm on Michelin Premacy tires, which are more focused for eco than outright grip, <laughs> they're actually holding the road really well. Oh, that's making me feel a bit sick, actually. <laughs> I've always liked the way the Tesla Model 3 is driven. I've always found it quite go-karty. I know that's a bit of a cliche, but it does sum it up. It's very much a point and squirty kind of car. It's also very responsive to the steering. Another thing I like about the Tesla is the brakes. They just don't feel like some electric car brakes. They feel more natural. Oh my gosh, it's so quick. It's quick and effortless. It handles really well. Normal people 
what an electric car this is going to handle as well as they're ever going to need it to and even for people you know petrol heads who think you know what maybe i'll get an electric car because it's cheaper through my work lease scheme blah 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 you will enjoy driving it you really will trust me do you know what i'm going to do actually wait 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 whoa 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 so you've got one pedal drive on the tesla so that is it stop and then it doesn't creep let me see where the thing is for whether I can make it just coast, which is actually better when you're hooning. I prefer it to coast rather than have that more aggressive braking when you lift off the accelerator, because it can just upset the balance. But I don't know where that is. Does it not have it? Did it? Did it? Did it? I can do acceleration, I can do steering. It's charging. Autopilot. Set speed. Century mode. No. Okay, you can't do it. You can on some electric cars. I thought you could on the Tesla. Maybe you never could. Anyway, I wish you could. Because the regen braking when you lift off is more aggressive than what it'd be like to coast on engine braking on a normal internal combustion engine car. So when you are thrashing it, you have to just get used to that. The way you lift off the throttle can have a bit more of a pronounced effect than in a normal ice vehicle. But blimey, <laughs> it absolutely goes for it. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I'd always have a Model 3 over a Model Y. I know the Model Y is the better seller, but for me, the 3 is the better car. I can't imagine the seal could be as good as this. Time for the BYD seal. Right away, I can tell it doesn't handle as well as that Tesla Model 3. Doesn't feel as punchy either when you come out of the bends. Oh, I know what to do. Let's put it into sport mode. Sport. Yeah, it feels a little bit quicker, but still, doesn't have the punch of the Tesla. That's gonna be down to the weight. It's just heavier. Oh, so I'm getting this warning constantly saying I'm going over 50 miles an hour. Yeah, I know. I can see the speedo. It's all right. It just doesn't seem to have as much front end grip. Once again, it's on eco tires, this time Continentals. But I think it's more to do with the chassis than the tire. Oh, there, and it kind of lost its composure a little bit. And the stability control just helped me out. It just feels looser, less tied down, a bit more floaty, a bit more leany, a bit more vague. Ultimately, it's just not as good dynamically as that Tesla. The Tesla feels genuinely more sporty, more sorted, and more special to drive quickly. This is not awful, I don't hate it, but it doesn't have that sporty edge of the Tesla. Just a little bit looser and less precise. Also, there's loads of binging and clicking and bonging going on because of safety systems, which I have no idea how to disengage right now. I'll give it this though. Subjectively, it seems a little bit smoother over bumps because it's got softer suspension. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's time to come around a little bit there. <laughs> it will actually rotate to a bend. The stability got crossed there and just killed it all. Way there we go. Oh, <laughs> it's okay, but it's a definite win for the Tesla in terms of the handling. <laughs> actually. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm actually getting it rotating. It's looser, and in some ways, it's a little bit more flighty and fun. The Tesla's more tied down, more sporty, more precise. This has a kind of like looseness, which you can exploit. Hmm. It's really funny, just over that short little drive, I was very underwhelmed, but now I want to go again. Because it maybe by accident, they've created a car that if you know a little bit about what you're doing, it can be good fun. I'm gonna go for another run. I didn't want to go for another run in the Tesla. It made me feel a little bit sick because it was so like, <laughs> whereas this, it feels more playful. I'm sure they haven't engineered it for that. It's just because it's a bit loose. Like, uh, see, it's like rotating. <laughs> I mean, the stability does just kick in and kill everything. If I could turn the stability off, this could actually be quite a decent amount of fun. The stability just kicked in there and just shut everything down. Look, it's sliding. See, I'm doing a four wheel drift there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so close to being fun, but accidentally so. Yeah, I think for most drivers, they're going to feel that the Tesla is the more sorted, stable and precise and better handling car. And really it is. This is just a bit looser. But when it's slippery like this, 
with your water just hooning about. It's surprisingly good fun, just how loose it is. Brakes, I still can't get on with the brakes. They're just awful. So grabby. Like, uh, uh, frickin' heck. Look, way! Oh, wait, see, the stability killed me there. It's quite mobile. <laughs> right, after all that, I found that to be quite a lot of fun. But you can't be doing that kind of thing on the road. And really, on the road, the Tesla is just going to be the better handling and more secure handling and safer handling car. I might have enjoyed this more right now in these circumstances. But overall, I take the Tesla in terms of the handling. Do you know what? If they sorted out the stability control, maybe allowed you to turn it off, make it a bit rear biased, this could be a lot of fun. I was not expecting that. In fact, I'm gonna show Jack. So this is weird, this car. You're gonna see why in a moment. <laughs> it rotates! It rotates! It's like a clear 182. Look! Whee! <laughs> But you can't do that on the road. No. And the Tesla will just absolutely kick this thing's ass on the road. But out here, what? you're like, hey, honestly, you should have a go. That's really cool. Do <laughs> you think it's just regening more on the rear? No. I think it's the tyres, because it's got eco tyres. Yeah. I think it's an accident. A happy accident. Yeah, I think it's a happy accident. They have not entered that in, surely. And I think it's just these conditions. Is it building your dreams? My dreams have been built. Do you want to go? Yeah, got me. <laughs> See? That's really good. <laughs> He's got no business doing that. But yeah, you can't do it on the throttle. No. It's, just, it's all on the chuck. It's all about the chuck. But most people, no. they ain't going to want that. No. They're, no! That no. kind of chucking it in and it's rotating, you do not want that. Anyway, so, are you surprised? Yeah, I'm actually surprised. I was. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, the BYD Seal is a really good electric car. I like it a lot, but I like the Tesla Model 3 even more. And that's why it wins this test.